Okay, so so far we're talking about the Dell operator, the gradient vector field and how we use the Dell operator on the scalar field to get the vector field as well as the directional derivative. So I would just like to complement this section by including two small theorems. They are small theorems because they are easy to understand, they are quite common sense and what I like about them is because it sheds some light on the gradient of phi just as like we have been trying to find. Okay, let's just assume that we have phi x, y, z. Okay, scalar field and its first partial derivative con continuous. Okay, meaning to say we can partially differentiate this with respect to x, y, and z, just like how when we use the del operator. Okay, and that they'll be continuous. Okay, and then we found out that the, the, the directional derivative written as this at p naught is equals to del phi evaluated at p naught dot with a unit vector u. Okay, we got this statement over here. Now let's look at this statement for a while. Okay, at this point I would like to say that del phi, the del operator or the gradient of phi has many interpretations in physics, engineering, mathematics. This is just one of them. And I can't possibly show you all the definitions of del phi, let alone whether I know all the definitions, but I can slowly show you them one by one. And the first one is that we know we can use del phi and the unit vector to find the directional derivative. So a theorem associated with this goes like that, okay? I would like to draw the diagram so that we can really understand what's going on. Now we got a point P naught over here. Okay? And we got a, a unit vector u, let's just, just, just say it's pointing over here. And what this gives us, it gives us the rate of change of phi as we travel in this direction over here. Not to be confused with del phi. Because del phi, we put in a point P0 inside del phi, we get a vector, correct? That vector need not necessarily be in the direction of u. Meaning to say, at P0 is over here, we put del phi, del phi evaluated at p naught to give us a vector, let's just say it is over here, okay? It's still fine, it's still fine. Two different vectors, we dot them to get the directional derivative. But the theorem goes like this, okay? And that is, the greatest change of phi, or the greatest value of the directional derivative would be in the direction of del phi evaluated at p naught and that value is simply the magnitude of this. Okay, I repeat again. The theorem is the greatest value of the rate of change of phi. In other words, the greatest value of du phi divided by p naught is equal to the magnitude of this and it will take place in the direction of this vector here. Reminding you that this vector and this vector need not be the same. So, del phi evaluated at p naught gives us this vector over here. The unit vector is u is over here. But if we want the greatest change of this value, we need to travel in this direction. Bearing in mind we're in 3D space, we can travel in any direction. But if we travel in this direction, we get the greatest change of phi, as opposed to traveling in this direction over here, which we very well could. Now, why is that so? Well, we just have to look at this and use a property of the very famous dark product which we are all familiar with. What does the dark product really say? The dark product says that I take the magnitude of the, the first vector times with the magnitude of the second vector and I times with cosine theta where theta is the angle between these two vectors over here. Very well, let's identify theta over here, theta's over here, like so. Okay, but what do we know about u, the vector u? We know the unit vector, so we take the magnitude, we get this. Magnitude of u is simply 1, so we just times this by cosine theta. Okay, now what do we know about cosine theta? Well, trigonometry experts over there know that cosine theta is between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so obviously we want the greatest value of this, we will in turn want the greatest value of this, so we want the greatest value of this. So between minus 1 and 1, okay, we would simply take 1 as our value. So this would equal to this over here, okay? 
Now, when is theta equal theta zero equals to one? Well, that is when theta equals to zero. Meaning to say that the angle over here is zero, so we would somehow just shift the vector u into the gradient or the vector evaluated at del phi or the, the vector of del phi evaluated at p naught which is over here because for the greatest value we let cosine theta equals to 1 that's when theta equals to 0 and that is when u travels in the same direction as del phi evaluated at p naught or it's when p naught travels in that direction for the greatest change of phi, the direction of derivative. And that value, okay, is also subsequently equal to the magnitude of del phi evaluated at p naught. Conversely, let's just say we would just bring this all the way to this step over here, okay. For the smallest value of the directional derivative, we just simply choose cosine theta equals to negative 1. And that will give us negative magnitude of del phi evaluated at theta over here and what does and when does this happen well cosine theta equals to minus one when theta is equals to pi just recall your cosine graph okay and what does that mean that means that the angle from the vector del phi evaluated at p naught is in the opposite direction as u you now and this angle is theta over here so you now are traveling in the opposite direction so if we want the smallest change Okay, the smallest change of the directional derivative, we simply let the angle between u and del phi, or we travel in an angle away from del phi by the angle of pi, uh, pi okay, to go into that direction over there. Sorry, it's pi. Okay, so the angle is pi so that u travels in the opposite direction if we want the smallest change of du phi or directional derivative and that value is equals to negative magnitude of del phi evaluated at pi naught oh, sorry p naught so this is just uh, just to shed some light on the interpretation of del phi getting the minimum and maximum values of the directional derivative take make it use of the cosine theta and its function okay short theorem easy to understand I hope you got it.